Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Got to get just a little bit more volume. Just a little bit more. Amen. It's good to see uh, those who have come to be with us. Amen. Uh, those who have traveled to be with family. I see some of my family is here uh, that has traveled. Brother Chris all the way from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Or is it Kansas City, Kansas? Which one is it? Missouri or Kansas? Missouri. All right. Brother Chris is here. My sister, amen. Marjorie is here from Cincinnati, Ohio. Amen. And we see others who are here. We thank the Lord for you. Amen. It's good to see uh, Sister Dorothy is with us today. Wasn't feeling well last week. Amen. God is a healer. Amen. And he heals all the time. Amen. Nothing's too hard for, for him. Amen. We thank the Lord. Sister Bendoff is with us today. She was down last week. Amen. We thank the Lord for her. Amen. For all of you. Amen. And we wish you all, amen, a Merry Christmas. We will be back um, next Sunday night, 10 o'clock. Amen. We'll be here Sunday. Amen. We want to have our service then our watch night service, which will be at 10 o'clock. Amen. Praise the Lord. They don't do like they used to. Uh, remember the watch night services around 1155. It was pop, 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 pop for about 30 minutes. They would be shooting. They don't shoot like they used to. Amen, and I'm glad about it. Amen. I tell you, they used to shoot all over the place. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Things are not like they used to. Some things have gotten better. Not many, but that's one of the things that we can look back on and say things have gotten better. The book of Isaiah, chapter number 9. Isaiah chapter number 9. We're going to read one passage of scripture. Amen. Going to let everybody leave who's going to leave. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got to go? Praise the Lord. Scripture says you got to keep your feet in the house of the Lord. Amen. And every preacher and anybody who knows who does any type of speaking, amen, it is a distraction when people, amen, move around. I'm all right with the babies crying. I'm all right with the babies moving. But it's them big folk. Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 6, Isaiah writes, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are on today. 
You have wakened us up this morning, started us on our way. You have blessed us in our travels, and we thank you, Father. We pray now that you would anoint the ears of the hearers today. Thank you for the anointing you've anointed us with. Now bless in this house. Save, heal, deliver, set free, whatever it is that you decide to do, Lord God. Help it to be all right with us. And we will be forever careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. As you take your seat, look at somebody and say to them, neighbor, what's in a name? That's the wrong neighbor. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, what's in a name? Ah, uh, put your hands together and give him some praise. What's in a name? The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, Beginning with verse number 19, it says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. He thought to put her away. He could have put her away privately, or he could have made it publicly. But in verse 19, it says that he was a just man. He had to be a just man. You see, God had, had it all planned out. God had it all figured out. If he would have been a hot-headed man, if he would have been a man that was full of anger, one with whom there was no reason within, it would not have worked. He could have put her away publicly and putting her away publicly. The Bible lets us to know in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, and starting at verse number 22, and it reads what would have happened if he would have put her away publicly. It says, if a man be found lying with a woman, married to an husband, and they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou be put away, amen, evil from Israel. So you would have been taken outside of the city, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a man, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, bring them both out and stone them with stones. He could have put her away. That would have been the public way of putting her away. Because now she's saying unto him, I am with child. This is something that Joseph has to deal with because he loves Mary. The law says that he could or should take her and the gentlemen outside of the city and have them both stoned that the evil might be put away from Israel. But Joseph didn't want that to happen to Mary, so he decided I'm going to put her away privately. 
putting her away publicly, he could have gotten the money back that he had gave to her mother and father. He could have retrieved that money, putting her away privately. Uh, he would not have been able to retrieve that money. However, yeah, there still had to be witnesses uh, of him putting her away and the calls. Amen. He didn't have to go into any detail. He could have just said, I don't like the way that she cooks the toast. Amen. It was legal, amen, at the time to put away, amen, your spouse. And then Jesus had to come and clarify it when the Sadducees and the Pharisees bombarded him. And he said, I say unto you, except it be from fornication. Y'all ain't going to help me in here today. He could have said, uh, the eggs that she boiled cracked and I'm putting her away. Anything he could have gave a reason. He was a just man and he didn't want to see anything happen to her. He considered the thing that she had told him that I am with child. God had not yet talked to him but he had talked to her and she had been conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now Joseph has to deal with it and God does not leave us ever hanging. He knows how to deal with you and when to deal with you. While all this was going on in his mind, it says while he thought on these things, the angel appeared to him and said, Fear not to take thy wife Mary. Take her for a wife because who and what she has conceived has been done by the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. Praise the Lord. And when she brings forth this son, which was conceived by the Holy Ghost, thou shalt call his name Jesus. I heard the children sing the song, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful name. I love that name today. Amen. That name is above every name. And it is at that name that every knee shall bow and tongue shall confess. There is no other name like the name Jesus. And I imagine when the angel told him about that name, that was a peace that came over him within itself. Something about the name Jesus. When you call on him, amen, demons tremble. Y'all don't feel like praying today. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Understand, my brothers and my sisters, it was now time for the taxation period and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem. She is espoused with child. and She is ready, amen, to give birth. When they get to Bethlehem, amen, it is time for her, amen, to bring forth this son. There is no room uh, in the Holiday Inns or the Comfort Inns. So they had to take Mary, the mother of Jesus, back in what appeared to be, history says, uh, some type of cave 
where the angels back in the barns, where, amen, the other animals were. And she had to bring forth her child. He was born in a manger. And they didn't wrap him in silk or satin linens. But he was wrapped in swaddling clothing. Just an old sheet somewhere. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But he is the one that you shall call Jesus. Praise the Lord. He didn't have to even be born. Amen. He could have came, amen, as a middle-aged man uh, in pomp and in glory riding on white chariots. Oh, no, but he came that he might be able to identify with us that he might redeem us. The Bible says we don't have an high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He know what it's like to be a young person. My God from Zion. Bible says when the fullness of time had come, he was born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might become the adoption of sons. He had to know what it was like to be a child. He knows what it's like to be a teen or a young adult and to become a man. He knows how we feel when we lose somebody. Ah, hallelujah. He knows what it feels like when somebody dies that you love because he experienced it himself. That's why he's able to comfort you in the time of losing a loved one. Amen. He knows what it's like to be tempted and to be tried. Amen. To go through, he knows what it's like to be lied on, to be talked about. He knows the feelings of our infirmity. Amen. Jesus understands, amen, everything that you're going through. As he is there in the manger, there is a star, and there are some men from the east who see the star, and they follow that star, and they wanted to know where is the king of Israel to be born. Uh, the scripture had spoke to them, uh, to the leaders and the scribes and Sadducees and the Pharisees, and said, according to the book of Micah, he shall be born in Bethlehem. Uh, so then they go towards Bethlehem. Herod stops them and says, when you find him, let me know where he is. Uh, but the heart of Herod was to do evil unto the child. And so when the men found the child, they left him and went towards another direction back to where they were from. But they brought this child gold, which is for a king. They brought unto him incense, which is for a priest. And they brought him the oil of myrrh, which signified that he was going to die. My brothers and sisters, gold, frankincense, and myrrh 
Jesus did not come, amen, to live a life of old age. But Jesus came to die. He came to die because the offering and the sacrifices and the blood of goats and bullocks were not sufficient. And so he came to shed his blood. He came to redeem us once and for all. My brothers and sisters, there is no other form of redemption than the redemptive act that Christ done on Calvary. He is the one and the only one who can save us from our sins. That's why you call his name Jesus is because he's coming to save us from our sins. He may perform miracles here and there while he's here. He may uh, make many fish of just a few, few fish and loaves. He may feed 5,000 with just lunch for a 12-year-old. He might even raise the dead along the way. He might preach sermons on the mount. Uh, he may teach in the temples. But the purpose of him coming was to die. Uh, God searched the whole world and could not find any who was able to perform a man redemption for man. So with his own arm, he brought salvation to himself. The Bible picks it up in Timothy and says, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, preached into the world, believed upon by the Gentiles, and was received up into glory. It is when he was received up into glory, it is when he was leaving from the Mount of Olivet. His disciples stood there and they were talking to him. He said, I got to go. He said, but go to Jerusalem and wait till you be endued with power. It is then as he began to rise up that the angels came and spoke to his disciples. They said, why do you stand gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus shall come in like manner. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad he's coming back again. Aren't you glad he's coming back again? Shout hallelujah. Well, my brothers and sisters, it is this Jesus, a man that Herod tried to kill as a young child. He went in and he tried to kill every child under the age of two years of age. Uh, but if God be for you, who can be against you? Uh, Joseph was warned by an angel to get out of uh, Nazareth and Bethlehem of Judea and flee into Egypt. He fled into Egypt. He took Mary and they went to Egypt that the scripture might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Well, my brothers and sisters, in the Bible, a name does not merely identify, but a name expresses the essential nature of the bearer. 
In other words, it's not just something that they throw out, amen, but a name during these times meant significance, amen. It was who this person was thought to be or become by the ones that love them. All the way back in the time, Adam named the beast of the field. He named them by observing their natures. When he seen a rabbit, uh, he could not have named it an elephant because an elephant meant one of great stature. The rabbit moves quickly and hops around. So Adam looks at the lion and said, amen, he's a roarer. Amen, there's something about him that appears to be mightier than the rest. He is a lion. He lies in wait. Y'all don't want to help me here. He has strength. He has courage. His mane, amen, almost makes him kingly. And so he began to name the wildebeest. He began to name the alligators. And he looked and studied them and gave them what is now to be known as a name. My brothers and sisters, amen, as he observed, amen, he could not base his judgments on anything else but what he observed. To know God's name is to know God as he revealed himself. To understand his nature is to know some of the names that they called him in Old Testament times. They said he's Jehovah Shammah because he provided peace for them. They said he's Jehovah Jireh because he provided the ram in the bush. They said he's Rofa because he could heal. Amen. Olam because he was almighty. When Moses was in war with the Amalekites and God gave them victory, they said he's Jehovah Nisi. It's on and on throughout the scripture. They called him Tiskanu because he was righteous. They knew the character of God. And when God showed who he was in different instances in the lives of men and women, they would then characterize him by giving him a name based upon what he had done for them. Well, my brothers and sisters, then they begin to know the nature of God. He spoke to Moses and says, tell them I am that I am hath sent you. In other words, whatever you need me to be, that's what I'll be. You're going up against a superpower. You're going up against Pharaoh and Egypt. And I don't want to just tell you that I am a rainmaker, a keeper, or a provider. But I want to give you full access. I want you to have everything at your disposal. So tell him I am had sent you. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
names meant something in biblical times. Esau said, he, speaking of his brother Jacob, says, is he not rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me these two times. He has taken my birthright, now he has taken my blessing. In other words, mom and dad, y'all gave him the right name. And I should kill him for what he has done. So they had to send Jacob down to his uncle Laban's house. But he had been given the name as a supplanter. It is Abigail who pleads for Nabal's life when he gets ready to disrespect. David. Abigail says to David, uh, David, don't harm him. Folly is with him because his name means a fool and folly is with him. His name identifies and expresses who he is. Jabez, when his brothers and sisters, uh, amen, didn't think that he would amount to anything, he tried to live his name down because his name means pain, uh, amen, but sometimes God can flip the script uh, and Jabez prayed and said, I don't want nothing for myself other than for you to enlarge my territory. Give me more understanding and give me more wisdom and knowledge that I might be able to serve you that others may know about your goodness. Somebody needs to know in here today that when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul should cry out, Hallelujah. A name is bound, I'm not going to be much longer, but a name is bound to existence. Nothing exists unless it has a name. The Bible tells us, isn't that something? Amen. Everything has a name. Things that you cannot see, uh, the wind, uh, the air has a name. We call it wind and air. We can't see it, but they are bound by their name. When we get a strong gush of air coming, somebody says it's windy. Why? Because that's what we know it as. The water is wet, but if you need something to drink, you'll get you some water. It is bound. I'm trying to go somewhere. Y'all ain't helping me. It is bound by it is existence. Everything has a name. What you are walking on top of, the ground, the carpet, everything has a name. In Revelation 3 and 12, Jesus says, I am going to those who overcome. I will write, watch out here, on them my new name. Somebody shout new name. Amen. It's Jesus now because it has to be Jesus for the time. It has to be Jesus as a savior. Jesus as a redeemer. 
it couldn't be nothing else to save you but Jesus. Nothing else to rescue you but Jesus. Nothing else to redeem you but Jesus. Nothing else in this time to make the demons tremble but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus in the sick room. Nothing but Jesus in the courtroom. Nothing but Jesus when you're down, when you're up. No matter where you are, it is Jesus. Amen. But there is going to be a time when a change is going to come and he's going to write his new name on us. I don't know what it is, but it is a new name. And for the time that we will be in, we will understand it better by and by. I heard the scripture when it says, there'll be no more death pain, sorrow, or sickness, for the former things are passed away. I come by to tell somebody it's going to get better and better as the days go by. If you don't know him, you need to know him today. If anybody knows him, just shout, he's all right. Oh, yes. Call on him. He's all right. He's all right. A change. Yes, Lord, praise him. Praise him, sis. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A change. A change. A change. Stay with me here. A change of the name. Signals in the scriptures. That there is a change of position or a change of character. Saul, you're no longer going to be Saul, but you're getting ready to change your character. And I'm going to now call you Paul. Jacob. You were a supplanter and a contender. But after you wrestled with the Lord, you're no longer a contender, but you are a prevailer. He changed his character and his position. Abram, you're no longer just Abram. Abram means you're just a father, but now there's going to be a change, and I'm going to call you Abraham. You're no longer just a father, but Abraham now signifies you are a father of nations. Isaiah, can I get to our text? I'm, I'm going to cut these corners here. Isaiah is a man, is a scholarly, educated man. Now, we may have told you, unlike Amos, who was a herdsman. Amen. Isaiah was an edu educated scholar. He understood about names. He had two sons, and he named them Sheer Jashub, which means a remnant shall return. 
Isaiah the prophet is prophesying through his son. He is saying a remnant shall return. So he named his son that name. He had another son. He named him Meher Shalal Bez, which means quickly spoil. In other words, things are about to get bad here in Israel. So he puts that name prophetically upon his son. We have this man who is in tune with God, who understands the significance of naming his people. So now when God begins to deal with Isaiah, he deals with Isaiah in this vision on this wise. Isaiah sees a child being born in a manger. He looks at this child and when he observes this child, he is filled with wonder and amazement. What he sees is just a little bitty baby with five little fingers, five little toes, uh, crying and weeping because he is hungry. He looks in amazement and God reveals uh, unto us a child is born. Isaiah is in the vision and he now hears God talking to him, understand and relating the significance of names. God begins to tell Isaiah over 750 years prior to the event. He looks at the child and God speaks and said, a child is born. He's first of all growing up in darkness because verses 1 through 6 tells us about the hour upon which this child shall be born into. But don't get discouraged, Isaiah. You have already named your name one who quickly spoils. You have already named your son the first one that a remnant shall return. Isaiah sees the child, the baby lying there. He doesn't quite understand the vision, but God begins to speak to him and says, Thou shalt call his name Wonderful. Why is it wonderful? Because nobody could be like this child is. This child is both human and divine. Isaiah has been around for a long time and he's never seen nothing like this. Nothing can compare to a child having all power being equal with God and not counting it robbery to be equal with him. One who would come and save the world from their sins how could he be him he's just a child but God said ain't it wonderful turn to somebody and say neighbor ain't it wonderful just to be able to hold him Simeon held him and almost lost his mind he said I'm ready to I now because my eyes have beheld him. It is amazing. Oh, how amazing is the God we serve. Ain't he wonderful? You can't figure 
it out no matter how hard you try. You and me, we were sinners. But here came a wonderful Savior call his name Jesus shout hallelujah shout hallelujah wonderful is just a characteristic of who he was because you can't figure him out or it out or know about it he's just wonderful but oh Joseph don't put her away y'all ain't helping me here Call his name Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Call him wonderful. He is not only wonderful, but he is a counselor. In other words, he can give you right now advice upon all matters. Amen. From A to Z, from trial to test, from tribulation to heartache to pain to sorrow. He knows all the He's a counselor. Don't talk to your neighbor. Don't text your neighbor about it. Don't get on the telephone. But if you need somebody to talk to, talk to Jesus. He knows all about it. Somebody shout yeah. Push your neighbor on the shoulder and say, neighbor, I ain't telling you no more. I'm going to take it to somebody who knows that I know that I know that I know is able to fix it. You can't fix it, but I know a counselor. He's money God. He's L God. He's hero. He's my champion. He's my everything. Ah, he can defeat all these other gods. He's greater than Baal. He's greater than Ashtaroth. Greater than Diana. He's greater than all these other gods. Greater than Dagon. And there's a lot of gods that they were up against. And they were living in a dark hour. Isaiah say, woe is me for I live in the midst of an unclean people. Ah, there was an uncleanness everywhere. But out of the darkness came a mighty God. And Isaiah is still observing just a child lying in a manger. But he is my hero. He is my champion. He's my hope. He's my all. He's my light in darkness. He's my friend when I'm friendless. He's my hope in sorrow. He's mighty God. Throw your hands up. Throw your head back and shout hallelujah. He's everlasting father. From the beginning of time. That's him. He's the one. He done robed himself up. The likeness of sinful flesh. But that's him. There's no sin in him. He has come. And he has come. But for one purpose, he has come to die. Give me five more minutes and I'll be out your way. There is a man by the name of Shakespeare. He wrote a story called Romeo and Juliet. In the script, it says, these are the words of Juliet. That which we call a rose 
by any other name would smell just as sweet. Meaning that names are irrelevant. That's what Shakespeare thought. That no matter what you call it, a rose is a sweet smelling flower. You can call it by whatever name that you want to call it. But it's still going to smell sweet. But you see, the devil is a liar. A name is relevant. That's why when Jesus came, when this child was born, wonderful is all right. Mighty God is all right. Prince of Peace is all right. Counselor is all right. These are attributes of what he can do. But Mary and Joseph, you're responsible for giving that child his real name. His name shall be called Jesus. And there is relevance in the name because the name means salvation. It means redeemer. It means rescuer. He rescued all of us from a horrible pit. Give your neighbor a fist pump and say, neighbor, he rescued me. I was sinking deep in sin, but oh, he threw me a lifeline. I remember the song they used to sing. Throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. Is there anybody who has ever got the lifeline? Shout glory. Shout yeah. I feel like preaching. There is relevance in a name. He could not have been called Moses because Moses just means to pull out. He could not have been called Elijah because Elijah means my God. He cannot be called David because David just means he's beloved. He could not be called Jeremiah because Jeremiah means exalts. He could not be called Danny because Danny means that God is your judge. He could not be called Gerald because Gerald means to rule with a spear. He could not be called Larry because Larry means crown with a reef. He could not be called Dennis because Dennis means a follower of Dionysus. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad that his name What? What is in a name? Power, victory, authority, joy, hope, peace, Jesus, my Savior, my all, my all. Yeah! Yeah! Shout hallelujah! a doctor in the sick room, lawyer in the courtroom, shield, bridge over troubled waters, Jesus, Jesus, whenever you get in trouble, 
from here on out call on Jesus he will Write it, write it on me. Oh, yes. Woo! Hallelujah. time to praise you. This is a good time. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. That a rose is a rose. No matter what you name it, it's still gonna smell the same. But if you call him anything, if you call him anything but Jesus, you have missed the mark. Because no other name can heal, no other name can deliver. Clap your hands. Yeah. 
God bless you. We're finished. We're finished.